Julian Schutze from Blood and Iron Martial Arts here to give you solo training tips for the longsword. Not everybody has access to a club that has training capacity of more than two times a week or sometimes even a club at all. When it comes to skill acquisition, more is more. So you may have to supplement some of that time training on your own. So I'm here to give you some drills specifically for that. One of the first things I recommend to people to practice at home is their grip switch. If you find that when you're switching your grip, it tends to come more to rotate a hand first and then pull, rotate a hand and then pull, you may want to practice the mechanic of using your thumb. So start with your sword and then just push upwards with the thumb. Start in your handshake grip and then just push forward, pull back push forward, pull back. It might seem monotonous, but the time you save from just pushing the thumb instead of rotating your hands will help your hand speed during fighting. Being able to do it with your bare hands is all well and good, but chances are you're gonna be sparring in your gloves, so you may wanna practice this with your gloves as well. So exact same drill, you can just sit down, do whatever you want, and practice using your thumb to push forward and pull back, push forward and pull back. Additionally, this is nice if you have newer gloves and you need to break those in as well. Last but not least would be to apply this thumb grip while actually performing a technique. So I'm going to do a shield how here. You can do this with a pell that is a little bit more preferable. You don't have to though. Start in your guard and then practice throwing that cut out while pushing that thumb up. If you find that you're doing that hand twist first, go back to working that thumb motion. Start in your guard, push that thumb forward as you throw that strike. Movement is such a fundamental aspect of this art that it's always worth practicing. So we're gonna be doing offline steps, both forward and backwards. So what I like to envision is two kind of tracks. Go to your guard and you're gonna step forward and off to the side while throwing a basic cut. And then off to the other side. Off to the other side. And then going backwards as well. so on and so forth. Next up is gathering. You can do this with or without a sword depending on your current skill level. So what I like to do is open with a nice passing step, gather while I transition to a new cutting area, and then step with that cut again. So at a higher speed, you'd cut, gather, cut again. Next up is kind of putting it together in terms of circling around a general area. So what I like to do is I like to pass, gather, Pass, gather, cut around until you circle completely out of your frame. One of the obvious advantages of a Pell is it gives you a target to hit, obviously, but as well as to give you something to circle around with. We can pair this with a thrust accuracy drill, for example. So you can have your target anywhere on your Pell. You go to thrust it, then circle around with the cut, and then withdraw. The next step would be to work an actual aggressive circling drill, striking the target. So combining this with the footwork we worked on before, we just put it all together. Practice circling around and then withdraw. One of my personal favorite drills to practice is kind of entering a flow state. Uh, this is a good way to also get accustomed to moving a sharp sword around, which is a good skill to have in general. So this relies entirely off the principle, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So the objective is to start just moving around, practicing general movement, going to your guard positions, and making it all fluid without actually stopping. If at the beginning you want to go nice and slow, that's important. Go slow so you have no artifacts in your training. If you're going slow and you find you're getting these choppy motions, slow it down even more and really analyze your nice biomechanics. So when you increase your speed, it all has these forms of being nice and smooth. And then additionally, you can do this exact same drill on a Pell. The main thing to keep in mind is you obviously can't follow through, which creates its own kinds of unique challenges.
One of the important things to keep in mind is that practice makes permanent. If during your solo drilling you're performing bad form or technique, then you're just being detrimental to your training. There's several ways to get around that. Make sure you have an open discussion with your instructor to show, show them what you're doing. If you don't have an instructor, well then film yourself and then review it manually. Or if you want not to be a shameless shill, but we do have a Patreon tier to review one video a month, so that is an option for you as well. But at the end of the day, if you are doing it right, then solo drilling will absolutely help your technique. If you don't put in the training, you're not going to get those results.